hi everyone, we are Team 15 and for our senior project, we developed a programmable mosquito trap for the Salt Lake City Mosquito Abatement District. With me are Josh Graber, Isaiah Bay, and Ali Zaki. The Salt Lake City Mosquito Abatement District tracks mosquito activity throughout the Salt Lake Valley in order to track the spread of mosquito-borne illnesses and deploy strategies to reduce mosquito population. The problem they're currently having is that the traps they're using don't give them any feedback on when they should be acting. As you can see on the picture on the left side of the screen, the current traps they use simply have a fan that's constantly on and a tube that runs CO2 that disperses through a tube close to the trap entrance to attract mosquitoes. They wanted a trap that would allow them to track local weather data to see what conditions may lead to high mosquito activity and iterate through multiple individual traps through the trapping period to figure out what time of day the mosquitoes are most active. There were some issues after the outbreak with sourcing some of the final components for powering the trap and getting some of the final pieces together. However, the trap was developed and programmed successfully. So for this trap to operate, it has to a variety of conditions all around the Salt Lake City Valley, around the airport and the lake. And taking some of these operating conditions into consideration, we, well, we discovered the following design specifications. We have to operate under a temperature range from zero to 140 degrees. We have to be impervious to rain, wind gusts up to 70 miles an hour, and humidity from zero to 95%. Taking those into considerations, we have developed and prototyped the design solution you see at the center of the page. Now, similar to the old trap that SlickMat has been using, the design disperses CO2, which attracts the mosquitoes to an intake fan that you see in red on the left side of the image. That fan sucks mosquitoes down and through the trap into mesh bags, which hang beneath the trap and house the mosquitoes for counting. What we have added onto their trap is the ability to index between 14 different tubes and mesh bags. So that allows them a more specific or a finer capture detail over their uh, capture period so that they can index out when mosquitoes are most active throughout the night. Weather data is housed within the weatherization box. We have wind speed, we have temperature, we have humidity, and we have time of day being recorded. The indexing between each trap is done by having two disks sandwiched together, a red disk, which you see on the top, and then a disc that holds all the traps beneath it. That is indexed with the motor seen in the center of a trap and a switch on the outside radius. That switch lets our logic know when a trap is directly underneath the intake and ready to be captured again. There is airflow through the weatherization box so that our temperature and humidity will still read accurately and everything inside does not get wet. There's a door on the back side that can be opened and closed so that the SD card and other electronics can be accessed by SlickMad easily without disassembling the whole lid. And quick connects have been added on the fore side of the trap so that the trap can be deployed, hung on the post, added power and CO2, and easily. Total cost for the trap comes to $468 for raw materials that Slick Mat will need to purchase. And then an additional labor for laser cutting and 3D printing will be needed on their end. So to speak to the logic and how everything programs and fits together, we initially wanted to go with an Arduino Zero that had an onboard real-time clock. However, we wanted to limit how much they had to put together as they will be having many of these you know, operations at one time. So what we ended up going with was an Arduino Uno, which is compatible with the boards you see above it in the top right. 
the Arduino Uno is the processing unit. On top of that, we have the motor shield, which, which powers the motor that indexes through all of the traps. On top of that, we have an SD card reader that lets them input the data they want and also export the weather data that is gathered throughout the night. And on the top is the SparkFun weather data shield that allows them to get pressure, humidity, and temperature, which is the three factors that the Mosquito Abatement District was interested in. So how it will work for them on the user end is they will take a micro SD card, they will use a TXT file to input the times that they, that they are interested in, the time slots, and then when the trapping period is done, they will take that out and it will have automatically generated a CSV file that will give them the weather data along with the times so that they can figure so that they can show when mosquitoes were most active and what conditions were around at those times. Um, and those conditions are really important uh, to test, uh, but due to the international health crisis, we're not able to test some of the critical functions of the trap. However, to ensure our engineering analysis had adequate foundation, it was decided to focus on the testing and calibration we did before spring break. Um, because local wind speed is an important factor to consider when deploying mosquito population control methods, because uh, the methods are mostly in aerosol form. Um, before spring break, we calibrated the anemometer with the wind speed data. It's the wind speed data collection device uh, using the wind tunnel in the thermal fluids and energy systems lab at the U. The calibration of the anemometer was done by putting the putting it inside the wind tunnel, setting the wind tunnel's fan to varying frequencies, which varies the velocity of the air flowing through it. And then we measured the dynamic pressure difference with the pitot-static tube connected to the pressure transducer. Uh, the dynamic pressure difference and output voltage of the anemometer were recorded, and a relationship between the dynamic pressure and the actual free stream velocity inside the wind tunnel was established using a variation of the Bernoulli equation seen here. Um, it was found that there is a linear relationship between the wind speed and the output voltage of the anemometer. This relationship is shown as a slope function on the figure in the test section. And we use that to calibrate the anemometer for the trap. Uh, furthermore, before the break, an analysis was performed on the possible effects of vibrations caused by the resonance or natural frequency of the fan motor which could possibly compromise the main structural components of the trap. Uh, the natural frequency of the main three components were calculated, mainly the, the 3D printed parts and all the laser cut parts. Um, it was found that all the components' natural frequencies were orders of mag magnitude above the frequency of the fan motor, so this was posing no problems for additional vibration and causing damage from it. Um, in conclusion, we feel that all of SlickMath's design requirements were met, modeled, and prototyped. A detailed model and drawing of the trap will be delivered, along with a parts to be ordered list, a parts to be printed list, and a parts to be laser cut list. Along with that, we will have a construction and programming guide, and all of this will be supplied to SlickMath by the end of the semester. Any questions? <laughs>